we put our hands together once again? Shall we appreciate the Lord for his grace? Preaching the sermon this morning is the moderator of the Global Evangelical Church, the Right Reverend Dr. Seto Kojo Ofori. May I humbly request that we rise and welcome him to the sermon. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Thanks again to the Lord. God Almighty, for making it possible for us to gather today, we are here to commission 33 people, one female and 32 males, into the holy ministry as probationers. Let's just draw one or two thoughts from the passage read, the passage came from Luke chapter 14, verses 7 to 14. Let us pray. Father, you have always opened our eyes, our hearts to your words. Because it is your will that we follow in your words. Do it again this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 14, verses 17 to 14, deals with two proverbs of Jesus Christ, parables, the parable of the wedding feast and the parable of the banquet. This morning I want us to look at the parable of the wedding feast just very briefly. Jesus Christ was invited by a Pharisee who was also a ruler to dine, to eat. So Jesus went. So you can see that Jesus Christ was social, was a sociable person. So he went. And when he saw people coming in, the way they were struggling for position. He spoke a parable. Hence the theme for today is wait for your promotion. Often in everyday life at our workplaces, you'll be told to work on your promotion, work out your promotion, yes. There are times you do that, but there are times you also have to wait for your promotion. So Jesus spoke this parable, telling them that when you are invited to a place, take a low seat, and then the one who invites you comes and says, no, this is not your place. Go and sit up there. Jesus explained that it was not okay, it was not right for you to begin to get the highest seat. Because if you did that, and somebody else, because you don't know who else has been invited, someone else, is supposedly more important than you, comes, they will say, oh, Mr. So-so-and-so, or Madam So-so-and-so, can you step down? And you will be disgraced. So the emphasis of Jesus Christ was and is on humility. In the parable, the, the, the one has been invited, invited by a master, just as you have been invited, invited into ministry. And the person came out of the person's own volition, just as you have also come. But when you come, it takes people. Some of those people may just be very seemingly low people to make you progress 
to make you reach the heights. It's just as he said, if you are invited, if the ushers were doing their work well, then it's the usher who may be a nobody who will tell you, come and sit here. I said, oh no, sit here rather. So there's the need for us to be patient, to wait for our promotion. Yesterday I told them, I told you, that there is the need for you to live and serve under authority. Very soon you'll be commissioned. And when you are commissioned, then you get more power and authority. You get a position power. Yesterday we said power is the ability to do work. So you get position power, you be able to do certain things more. Even the fact that you have been trained enables you to do certain things that he that you were not able to do. But let not this power get into your minds. You're also going to have authority. Authority is the right to do. After you have been commissioned, you would have the right to do certain things that he that you did not have the right to do. And people will look at you differently. But there is the need for you to humble yourselves. Come down. See, power comes from above, but it's granted from below. I'm going to explain to you. Power from above and power from below. You may be called, commissioned. Your call is from God. You are commissioned by the leadership of the church. But it is the people you are going to lead that are going to help you to, to fit into the position that you have been given. Power comes from above, but it is granted from below. Let me give you a biblical example and you will understand. Let me give you the example of David. Now, if you read the Bible very carefully, God said David was a man after his own heart. If God says that you are a man after his own heart, what else do you need? You just have to march on. But after God said that and he was anointed for the first time, David had to go through several things. After the death of Saul, we are told, David asked God, God, where should I go? And God said, go to Hebron. When he went to Hebron, then the men of Judah, they could just be ordinary people. Men of Judah came and anointed him king. God said, you are a man after my own heart. But it was, the, 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 the granting came from below, power from below. It is those down there that lift you up to where God wants you to be. And so if you go to the congregation and you begin to lord it over them, you begin to insult them, you begin to speak to them anyhow, you will be surprised with your degrees. Maybe you are posted and you are serving at, in a village, maybe like my village. You will be surprised the things that you face. Because Power is granted from below. It is those down there who make you who you are. If you were a mother, you gave birth to one, two, three children. The children are the people who make you feel a mother. They call you mother. Power comes from above, but it is often granted from below. And that's why you don't have to insult people. And that's why you have to be humble. On the heels of this, let me say one or two things even concerning our politics. 
very soon we'll be going to vote. It's power from below. You want to tell me no? Power from below. Look, if we wake up that morning to go and vote, and then we see in the clouds, the clouds, it is written the name of the person who will be, who will be president. Even then, people have to go and vote for that person or for some other person. It will still come from below. So power doesn't just come from above. You throw your weight about. And that is why for us in Ghana, when politicians begin to shoot people, they begin to insult, they tell this ethnic community you don't belong, they should remember that power comes from below. If the president were to engage me in a chat, five minutes chat, just that, one of the things I would tell him is that there is the need for an apology for some of these things. Because power comes from below. If the apology doesn't come today, it will come tomorrow. I'll tell him to apologize on behalf of his children. A father, sometimes fathers must apologize on behalf of their children. Because power comes from below. You can't begin to deride the people, to insult them, and then next time you think that, oh, they should elevate you. It doesn't come that way. So if you are a leader, if you are a politician, you are a pastor, you are a worker, you are put at a position there. Know that you, 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 you will not just remain there. And it is the people under you that make you fit into that position. So this comes to you as pastors. When you even go to preach, don't begin first by reading out your, how do you call it? Your curriculum vitae. I did this. I did that. Oh, once upon a time I did that. Just come humbly. Let even people initially assume that, oh, this person, what has he got to give? And then after five minutes, ten minutes of your preaching, of your teaching, they will say, hey, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. Power comes from below. So if you leave this place and somebody asks you what has the moderator said, tell them moderator says, power is from above, but it is granted from below. This is why you should not look down upon people, the people you are leading, if you do. Things will not move out, will not move on well with you the way you expect. Yes, you have power, you have authority, but use that authority well. Lead people. Be faithful in your leadership. This year and next year, two years, we have the theme Faithful Stewardship. And stewardship entails so much. You are called to be stewards, leading people. To be a steward is to be in charge, to take care of, to take care of that which has been entrusted to you. I was sharing some thoughts with Synod Committee members, saying that when you look at the theme Faithful stewardship, stewardship. There are a, a number of things that are involved. I started sharing stewardship of your formation. You have to be a steward of that. Where you were born. If you were born in a village, Aveme, you have to accept it that that is where you were born. If you were born in Mafia Vakbedome, you must accept that that is where you come from. First of all, then you are ready for your stewardship. Your mother was, was a farmer, your father was a farmer who brought you up. You have to accept that. If there are any things negative, then now you can work on those things. It's important that we be stewards, be stewards of your formation. Be stewards of your body, soul, and spirit. Spirit first. Accept Jesus as your personal savior. 
that your soul will be secured. But your body is also important. Care for your body. Eat well, eat at the right time. Don't go for revivals and then you come home and then you are eating at 10 p.m. That you have cast out all the demons. Care for yourself and teach others to care for, 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 for their bodies. It's part of the stewardship that has been entrusted into, into your hands. Tell your young ladies that they don't need the largest breasts and the biggest, uh, how do you call it, buttocks to be able to get the right partners. Tell them, tell them. It's stewardship of the body. People don't have to tattoo their, their, their bodies you know, for anything. I met a young man and uh, he tattooed his body and I asked, oh, why? He said, oh, you know, something happened to me some time ago and uh, I just, I've just tattooed my body so that I can remember. And then another thing happened another time, so I tattooed my body. So when a third thing happens, he will tattoo part of his body. If a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh happen, he would tattoo his body. Let people care for their bodies. You have a black body. Teach them to be stewards. These are some of the things we'll be going through throughout the, the year, the two years. Be stewards of your gifts and your talents. Spiritual gifts and your natural talents. Very often Christians have thrown away their natural talents. We only talk about spiritual gifts. Both come from God. Natural and spiritual both come from God. Be stewards of your talents. Be stewards of the community, of the corporate culture of your people. In which case, vote, we, are, we are going to vote soon. Encourage people to go and vote. Speak positively to them. Tell them to be faithful in the community. And tell them that when, 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 the vote, when the day of voting comes, whoever comes out as, as, as the head, as president, should be accepted. It's part of stewardship. We must also be stewards of the environment. If you travel a little around, you went out somewhere, some to certain places, even in Africa, and you came back to Ghana, in your mind, you will feel bad because you, rea you realize that we have lots of rubbish around. It's the duty of the pastor to teach people to be stewards of their environment. And then we'll be stewards of our resources. Resources, the things God has given you. These are some of the things you'll be taking people through. Read your Bible very well. Let your teaching be biblical. Be prayerful. Carry people along. Carry the weak along. This, the effect of COVID-19 ha, ha, has started. One year, two years, the effect will be there. You will begin to see that hardship has begun to creep into... into into, into the lives of people, you are to encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage your members. Live lives that will give glory to God. Be an example at any time. And carry your family along. Carry your spouse along. When you do these things, your promotion will come. Your promotion will come. You may be posted to a very remote village, but when you do these things very well, your promotion will come. So work out your promotion, yes, but wait for your promotion. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Ndia mele boblobe Nema uyowa 
amewe ya wobe wa nyame ike maudibe na nye. No jivi kura evi enyonu ojivi beka eveton. Ne de vimi ome yo obe mama, dada, mami, no me yo we, eme ya yo. Mereke ma yo, e vimi oji, yo we ya wo dada nuna o. Ta ame si ame elebene boboro kwe, ne bu ame, ame we du ame reji. Ame o, ya ya wo be fi ke ma ube na anoy, ya wa ano. Ta asofu o, bebe ame o kologe mi ebona. Mi kula ame o, ndi ame le boblon han be, e fe ime, to septemba penke ke gbanto kaka fe vela mi afe enyati ya enye konu vinu te fe wola emi dibe mi te gbede konu vinyenyeji konu vinyenye lo agbe fa pade si adede me wo afe me gbe nono wo gbodo me gbe nono e wo ha me gbe nono e lo de si adede me be mi enye konu vinu te fe wola o Damiano Claro be mi afia amao be wa nye konu vio ekema mi apo chichireji mi ave hama apo chichireji duko apo chichireji me di yehova fe yaira yehova fa me gbono no yehova fe ame unti koko yehova fe mota tada mengo yehova fe nunye chocho do akona me Yehoa fe nu te fe wawo. Yehoa fe nye didi na me. Yehoa fe me ya ira. Me di na mindi ya. E ya bala yike me ble na miya. Miya me bla ton voton yike. E di wa da si do ekba. Amere ke ma gele ma o. Le more ke di o. Yehoa ne nye miya fe mousen. Le Yesu Christo fe nko me. Amen. Mia, mia do beda. Afe to mi dakpe de wunyata. E yu e dibe mi ase gake. Mi te un glow le gapo po ya o ma afe to po nu nami na chow kwe nami. Wamen vevenik bagu de mi a jile Yesu Christu fan kome. Amen.